Hi. It's good to see you again. I wanted to distinguish between people that see this for the first time or have seen me before. And this is a little bit different than other things I've done because I'm still exploring this subject. I took, undertook a, a more in-depth study of Tantra. And one of, some of the things that came out of this is I have come to a deeper understanding of the power of Tantra in the mind that controls it. One of the things that I noticed from the disciples of uh, Swami Shivananda was the extraordinary display of abilities. I, I can so I, one of the disciples of Swami Shivanandas was a Swami Nada Brahmananda. And I actually took a music lesson from him. And it was incredible. He had me put my hand on his stomach and I could feel the energy pulsating out of his stomach. Just an example of the power. And each uh, Swami Chidananda had an, an intense intellect. Of course, Swami Satchanananda who was an exponent of Raja Yoga, seemed to have this energy field around himself. So I was duly impressed by that. But then I wanted to investigate uh, the 3HO organization because um, the people in the 3HO organization had power. They may not have had these abilities, but they had power. And Yogi Bhajan was a good friend of Swami Satchananda's, so I got a chance to see him periodically. I saw him the year before he died. And he was just radiant. The reason I'm mentioning this is because this set up a conundrum in me, or a contradictory thoughts. How could, okay, so apparently there was some connection between Yogi Bhajan and uh, Swami Satchanananda that made them be good friends. And, you know, they used to have a, a restaurant, the 3HO organization, in L.A. So I would go there periodically and eat the food. And the food was not like what the yogic diet was. Which, if you read Swami Sivananda's books about diet and stuff, he talks about avoiding potatoes and garlic and onions, all those things.
so I, I wondered about this disparity. Okay, here was these people with these abilities, but not a lot of power. Here was the 3HO people, not a lot of ability, but a great deal of power with what they did. So one of the outcomes of uh, the investigation of Tantra is I finally got an answer to that. In the Sattvic diet, I'm pretty convinced is now, you could say it's associated with um, the reduction in a man of testosterone. And if you look at the diet that the 3HO people have, it has things in its diet that increase the testosterone in a man. So this was extremely interesting to me. And so then in part of this whole thing, I've been investigating increasing testosterone and by God, there's real power from the in the Kundalini from the increase of testosterone. Now, so I've been thinking about this for a couple of months. And one of the things about testosterone is, yes, it increases the energy of the Kundalini, but it also makes you more liable to get angry. So now I begin to understand why they have the Sattvic diet. It turns out that you don't have as much energy with the Sattvic diet, but you control it better. So this, this explains some of the conundrum about Tantra. Tantra. And why Tantra is associated with Shiva rather than Vishnu and Brahma. I know that a lot of people are still going to have questions about all this, but I'd rather not say too much because if you can increase the power of the Kundalini, you can have an extraordinary increase in the power that you manage. But that's the trick. Manage. If you can't manage it, it can have very dramatic negative effects. So this is one of the reasons why they talk about in Tantra that you should go to a teacher that knows. Because sometimes the changes can be so dramatic it could even be threatening to your life. Anyway. Uh, so I feel that I have the, the duty to tell you about it, but I don't want to tell you any more until I undertake an investigation of what's going on in your life. So I think I'm going to leave it there. Thank you.